I have received my first job and I wish to commend it to all eligible Nigerians to do the same so that we can be protected from the virus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. President Muhammadu Buhari there, uh, speaking about the AstraZeneca vaccine after he was uh, injected earlier this month. It hasn't all been pleasant with those who have taken the jab so far. You know, on Sunday, Ireland suspended the rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine after some persons who are taking it reported blood clots. Since then, Spain, Germany, France, Italy, and even Holland have also halted the rollout. The World Health Organization, on the other hand, says the vaccine is safe as the side effects are mild. Let's now turn to a former Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Dr. Abdul Salami Nasidi, uh, to share with us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Uh, so let's uh, first of all start, you know, with your experience. Um, you currently are, of course, uh, with a Director of the West Africa Center for Disease Control. Um, so let's start with you know, the fears that people seem to be developing, a former director, I beg your pardon, uh, the fears that people seem to be developing with regards to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, how would you quickly address that? The WHO says that the vaccine is safe um, and, uh, of course, the symptoms are mild. Uh, would you agree and, of course, uh, give a go-ahead that it should continue to be used here in Nigeria? Well, thank you very much and uh, thank you for inviting me to talk on this. Uh, first, I must uh, correct, I'm no longer with the West African uh, CDC. Uh, I'm now a retired but not tired <laughs> uh, public health officer and consultant. So uh, I must first and foremost, uh, you know, uh, say that uh, the fear yeah, that uh, many are you know, expressing, especially some countries in Europe, uh, on the AstraZeneca vaccine and the fact that uh, uh, many of the African countries have received this vaccine and are, have already rolled out, you know, uh, the uh, vaccination program uh, should not uh, uh, be something that we should be too worried about uh, because uh, first and foremost, the uh, uh, countries in Europe that are reacting and uh, suspending the utilization of uh, this vaccine have reasons to do that. Uh, and uh, this is because uh, primarily, they have to uh, protect their citizens uh, from, uh, you know, possibility of damages from a vaccination program. But uh, what is very crucial is uh, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, you, you know, the, there has not been any scientific, you know, backing uh, as to the fact that, uh, you know, this vaccine is uh, causing a serious uh, awkward reaction that can, uh, you know, lead to the suspension of the of the of the vaccination program uh, as you are all aware uh, that uh, some of the claims that the vaccine is uh, you know causing a serious untoward reaction that is associated with clotting uh, has been challenged by many scientists worldwide and also the WHO believes you know that is not yet uh, proved the causal association between that and uh, the vaccination has is yet to be scientifically proven. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Nasi, uh, uh, on Thursday, uh, we saw eight European countries, you know, pull back the rollout of this AstraZeneca vaccine. And they're saying they're stopping that while they investigate the blood clot. But what do we know really about this blood clot as, as a side effect of using the AstraZeneca vaccine? Well, uh, we all know that uh, uh, for the blood to clot, where, where it needs, it has several mechanisms uh, that are involved, from biochemical to physical. Uh, primarily, is uh, you know when you have uh, a normal uh, uh, quantity of uh, blood platelets that are responsible for clotting or bleeding in the human, then uh, you'll be able to have changes in the way a human reacts to any injury or any, uh, you know, uh, external, you know, or physical affliction. So uh, the, the, by bleeding, 
they said they are observing that uh, some of the vaccines are actually developing signs of bleeding either from site of uh, injection or uh, you know from uh, uh, orifices which uh, are not uh, supposed to be and then also uh, some of the countries uh, you know reported that uh, they saw a sudden uh, drop in the uh, number of uh, platelets in the blood which also can lead to excessive uh, bleeding and uh, at the same time uh, they are saying that you know uh, some of the uh, you know uh, group vaccinated are coming out with some uh, organ uh, inflictions or afflictions uh, that is making the vaccines to really feel bad mm. but uh, you know as i've explained uh, this still scientifically have not been proven to say it is associated uh, with the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine right. uh, because uh, so far uh, the uh, frequency of bleeding seen among the 17 million people so far vaccinated in Europe uh, is not, uh, it's all less than uh, maybe 50 uh, cases out of 17 million. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, except if a number of bleeding in non-vaccinated people is less than this, then they, will, they could show some uh, degree of causal association. Okay. But uh, some okay. observations uh, so far, which is, even though not officially reported, have shown that uh, the number of uh, people that are not vaccinated, the uh, number of uh, people bleeding among those that have not been vaccinated could even be higher than among those uh, vaccinated. So there's still controversy around this. Okay, okay. now let's um, um, bring it down here to Nigeria. I'm, I'm guessing... Um, some of these you know, conversations are as a result of a rushed approval for some of these vaccines. The WHO and the world in general didn't have time to do you know, complete and extensive research um, on vaccination because of the urgency. Um, but how you know, do these conversations affect vaccine hesitancy here in Nigeria? And, and what would you advise that the PTF and the NCDC does in order to ensure that um, Nigerians continue to accept and go through with yeah, taking the vaccine? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very important question, but let me correct uh, Plus TV that I am not the Chief Executive Officer of the NCDC. I was former uh, Chief Executive Officer of the NCDC. So uh, uh, I'm happy that uh, you raised this question. Is uh, How does it affect us? And what should we do uh, to make sure that our people are not injured? So uh, the... Uh, public health sector of Nigeria, the Ministry of Health, and uh, the uh, other uh, agencies of the ministry must rise to the occasion to make sure that uh, there is no outer of truth in uh, these uh, observations and make sure that Nigerians are protected. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, some people are saying uh, the countries that are suspending the immunization in Europe are uh, too much in a hurry, uh, 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 not doing the right thing, yes. Uh, they might be in a hurry, but uh, there might be a case of re overreaction, but it's better to be safe than uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, injured. So they, they have the right to protect their people. And, uh, you know, if, let's say in the next one or two weeks, it's now uh, fully proven that uh, the observation is uh, faulty, then they will now uh, go back to uh, using AstraZeneca. Then uh, the most important part of your question is, how should Nigeria, you know, react and why, uh, or how do we come about, you know, the WHO uh, rushing uh, to approve AstraZeneca? No, no, what, what I'm asking say, is, you know, say. about vaccine hesitancy here in Nigeria and how the NCDC and the PTF yeah. must work to ensure that uh, Nigerians uh, feel completely safe uh, taking the vaccine. Uh, that's what I was coming to, uh, yeah. by saying that uh, first and foremost is to uh, uh, convince Nigerians that the uh, WHO did not rush the approval of AstraZeneca. And the WHO doesn't actually grant approval per se. What they do is they do very extensive, you know, uh, quality control, quality assurance uh, activities to make sure that any uh, biological or drug they are going to approve uh, under, you know, extreme emergency situation uh, is approved uh, with, that it has met all their requirements. So if you observe, there are about 17 vaccines now available worldwide, but only four has so far been approved by the WHO. So extensive work was done by the WHO before it was approved. 
So the vaccines that came to Nigeria were approved, or sorry, were listed, you know, for emergency use uh, by the WHO. And then our NAVDAC have done a very good job also to ensure that the quant uh, uh, content of the vaccine as uh, prescribed by the manufacturer is correct. And that's, that's why they now release it to Nigeria to use. So I believe Nigeria's, uh, the hesitancy, vaccine hesitancy in Nigeria was there even before the vaccine arrived. Nevertheless, I think we are now in a situation where uh, we should do our own observation to see that how many of uh, Nigerians so far vaccinated are coming down with any sign of reaction. Luckily, MPCDA and the, uh, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control are already engaged you know, in such studies and some groups. There's a committee now led by Professor Oyole Tomori, which I'm a member at, uh, advisory committee to the Honorable Minister, are uh, already instituting you know, lines of uh, in, uh, investigations that will confirm within a short period of time, you know, uh, how many uh, Nigerians were immunized and how many uh, untoward reactions have been observed. If there is anything that uh, will worry us, you can be rest assured, we shall advise the Honorable Minister to suspend the use of AstraZeneca. But for now, uh, we don't have any such scientific uh, evidence. All right, Mr. Nasidi, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just going to ask you that out of the 8,000 people that uh, the PTF confirmed yesterday that have been vaccinated, if you are aware of any reports of any of them, you know, exhibiting any side effects like maybe the blood clot, but you answered that already, that a committee has been constituted to investigate that. So I was going to ask you about the AstraZeneca vaccine. Its efficiency rate is about 70%, but there are other vaccines like Pfizer that the efficiency rate is about 94% and even higher. So do you think from your work you know, in this field that the efficiency rate of the AstraZeneca vaccine has anything to do with the news we're having right now about the blood clots and the side effects? Uh, that is a very powerful question also because uh, all we're concerned about is to quickly intervene and then boost uh, some human's you know, uh, immunity to fight the wild uh, COVID virus. Uh, the level of protection profiled by any vaccine uh, does not actually, you know, determine uh, which type of reaction uh, the, the vaccine will uh, give. So uh, even though AstraZeneca uh, profiled between, you know, 62 to 90 uh, percent, you know, averagely 70 percent level of protection, uh, it uh, remains up to tomorrow uh, one of the most uh, easily uh, affordable and hand, uh, easy to handle vaccine that the third world, I mean, the uh, limit, uh, low and middle income countries can uh, use to vaccinate uh, their people at an affordable uh, uh, cost. So there's an issue of access to vaccine, affordability, and then possibility to continue to cover larger population. Okay. All right. So I'm aware that all state governors have launched the vaccination programs in their state, except Kogi State. Can the federal government compel Kogi State to begin you know, vaccinating its, its, its people? Yes, this is uh, very unfortunate that uh, despite all experience, all, all the uh, you know, devastation caused by this virus worldwide, uh, to the extent that uh, the most powerful country in the world, uh, as the United States of America, was so devastated by this invisible enemy that uh, it killed more than 530,000 people. That uh, means, you know, killing more than the First World War, Second World War, uh, Vietnamese War, and the Korean War. This is really, really horrible that there will still be some leaders, especially in our part of the world, that are in denial. And uh, this is a tragedy. We believe that uh, the federal government must intervene to reverse this trend in the Kogi and other uh, states and then let uh, us uh, start uh, you know, working together if, uh, to protect Nigerians. Just to say that if every Nigerian is immunized and Kogi indigenous are not immunized, we are not fully protected. So when we have access to this vaccine, we must work hard to ensure that all those who are at risk for this virus, this disease are immunized. Okay, and of course, um, I think I'm also going to ask, you know, about the level of testing uh, that is uh, necessary at a time like this uh, by the NCDC uh, to, you know, do further research. Is there, is there a possibility that we can carry out our own further research on the AstraZeneca vaccine 
uh, to you know see you know what possible side effects may exist or may be possible. Uh, the Honorable Minister has directed that uh, all the institutions, NCDC, NPCDA, Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, and most of the medical uh, universities uh, or colleges should embark on extensive, you know, uh, follow-up and, uh, you know, uh, survey to ensure that uh, we don't have any serious, uh, you know, uh, issue with the AstraZeneca. And, uh, you know, just yesterday I got myself immunized and, uh, you know, at the uh, Asokoro uh, Hospital. And I have been uh, monitoring myself, my temperature, my blood pressure, my medicine and so on and so forth. And uh, right at, on the spot, the Minister of State for MCT directed that, you know, uh, every immunization center should work with the research institutes to make sure that within a short period of time, we can tell Nigerians how many people have been immunized and how many, uh, which percentage is coming with uh, untoward reaction or that if we are observing any serious uh, untoward reaction that can, uh, you know, cause deaths or uh, paralysis, uh, we should be uh, in a position to inform, you know, the nation through the Honorable Minister of Health within a short period of time. I can assure you that is already uh, uh, ongoing and as directed by the Honorable Minister of Health. All right, uh, I think I would uh, say a big thank you. Um, uh, yes, I just wanted to ask quickly before we go, Mr. Nasidi, um, there's like lots of issues regarding COVID-19 vaccines. They're very expensive. We see first world countries purchasing millions of doses for their, for their citizens. And even, you know, with an alliance like COVAX that are willing to give us for, for free, quantity is an issue. We can't get enough to vaccinate everybody. So where are we at the moment as Nigeria regarding our own local vaccine uh, research and production? Again, that's another, you know, important question. I'm uh, uh, aware that uh, efforts are being made uh, by the Nigerian government to work with a company called Bauer Vaccines, you know, to uh, initiate, you know, uh, establishment of a, a robust vaccine manufacturing plant in Nigeria. Uh, this is done on the basis of public-private partnership, the PPP. Uh, some of us are also initiating you know, uh, a vaccine manufacturing uh, research center uh, that will uh, collaborate with partners abroad to immediately engage you know, in uh, local efforts to manufacture vaccine. Nigeria has been uh, producing vaccines some years back and uh, we can easily reactivate all those efforts if the federal government you know, uh, and the private sector will uh, pull back and uh, uh, come to uh, address the issue that we must be self-sufficient in vaccines and biologicals. I'm very happy uh, Dr. Konjo Iwala yesterday mentioned this in the presence of Mr. President. We're very proud of her. She has already set the ball rolling. Nigeria will face this squarely. Africa needs to uh, manufacture its own vaccines and biologicals, and this should be done in a haste in okay. view of the oh. uh, uh, health security posed by, by this uh, pandemic. It has shown that we cannot be relying only on imported uh, goods to save our lives. Thank okay, you. You know, I think it's also important that we bring back the or bring up the conversation. Navdak warning about fake vaccines in the country. Now we're talking about local production. Um, how how much work does Navdak need to do at a time like this to ensure that there's uh, no uh, fake vaccines flooding the market? They put out a message a few days ago. Yes, uh, we're very happy that DG Navdak. Uh, made that observation, and we know our country, we know how uh, very fast, uh, you know, businessmen can uh, explore uh, weak situations and start, you know, pushing fake products into Nigeria. Uh, uh, one of the ish, ish, uh, ways to curtail this is to uh, warn Nigerians never to accept immunization against COVID outside the immunization, designated immunization centers. And then secondly, uh, we should also report, especially the elite, who will think they have the money to go and buy, and they might end up buying a fake vaccine being peddled by these uh, criminals, uh, to report any uh, uh, fast uh, business guy that is claiming that he has imported COVID-19 vaccine outside the COVAX and outside the uh, you know, route Nigerian government is uh, handling. That is the, the false uh, decision. 
Secondly, the DG NAVDAC uh, has warned that all vaccination centers should destroy the vials uh, that uh, are used, you know, uh, never allow them to be taken into uh, hands of the criminals because they could steal those vials and start filling them with uh, ordinary, you know, liquids to start uh, harming Nigeria. So that is already been handled uh, by the NPCDA and monitored by the DG. And I'm sure there, there are some public health laws that uh, people that are engaged in such things, if, if caught, uh, could face severe, you know, uh, punishments. All right. Dr. Abdusalam Amina Sidi, former director, West Africa Center for Disease Control. Thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. And uh, we, of course, I look forward to another conversation with you. Thank you. It's my, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. You are all very uh, professional. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. Good morning to you. All right, uh, short break. When we come back, we're going now to talking about schools getting shut down here in Nigeria. 618, according to Amnesty International, 618 schools have been shot in northern Nigeria, of course, uh, as a result of the kidnappings and the insecurity issues. And we'll be getting into that conversation next here on The Breakfast.